In part 8 of our modelling fundamentals, we're going to have a look at the first of our automatic connections, the base plates. Base plates can be used on just about any form of structural object. Okay, um, it, It's a pretty user-friendly command, and we get to it via the ProSteel task. And there's two ways we can get to it. We can use the connection center, which we'll have a look at here. The connection center has all of our connections in here. Uh, if you go through here and expand it out, you'll see the different connections. We have the German connection set, the general connection set, and a Chinese connection set. Okay, um, I commonly use the German one or the general one. Okay, and ju just a little user tip, if you expand these out and go and have a look, the graphics will actually show you the different types of connection that it's going to put in. Alright, so it's well worth having a bit of a look through here and see what the uh, what pro structures will offer you, what the developers will offer you here. Okay, the other way of getting to it, all the common commands are here on these button sets. So you can see the, the uh, German one and the general one are here. Okay, uh, personally I like to use the, uh, the German one, but you can see that all the other connections that were here um, in the connection center also exist. Uh, under these fly out buttons as well. All right, so I'm going to use the German one. Read the prompt line, get in the habit of reading the prompt line. And for a base plate, I can grab this column anywhere and it will go to the bottom. So, you know, even if I grabbed up the top here or the middle, it knows it's a base plate and it has to go to the bottom. Okay, so holes, everything's done. Now, the key things that it's done is, let's have a look at it, is it's shortened the base plate. I'll just see if I can kind of make it stand out here for you. You can see that it's shortened the column and that's to allow for things like grout allowance and so forth. You can see here uh, number four. Okay, number four on the graphic here shows us that we've got a grout allowance and it's shortened up the column here to suit that. Okay, so it's a pretty funky little command. It, it, it does a lot of work for us. Okay, um, we can nominate the plate width by plate um, length, although it says height there. If we make it something like 200, something you can get out of flat bar, it will make it by default out of flat bar. Okay. If we set it to something that isn't flat bar, let's say 205, all right, the object type will change to plate. Okay, because it, it can't it can't cut that out of uh, flat bar by default. Okay, now the only thing to watch out for is see the, the, the color is still is still um, blue. So I, I, I want it to look like a, a plate. So so if I was to change it, you've got to be mindful. If, if, if I'm gonna make it something that is not available out of flat, please tick the, uh, the poly plate switch. Okay, it just makes it easier for you in the long run because it stands out that it's not a, not a flat. All right. Um, you can see here that it's it's selected what column that it will go on to. It, that really just tells you what column it's that it's picked. Um, the plate thickness. Now in this plate thickness, because you've got to fly out here, you must pick the number in there. You can't just type a number. Uh, grout thickness. Horizontal offset is the offset of the plate to the column. And in our options, um, align the plate means if the column's leaning over, do you want the, the base plate lined up with the column or lined up with the ground level? Uh, as polyplate, we've discussed that. It will shorten the column for grout. Rotate flat steel is interesting. Um, it will change the ECS axis direction. This is really important, okay? Um, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, we do want to form a group. That means that uh, a group means that the plate belongs to the column. And sometimes you want it either with bolts or with welds if we had them. Uh, quickly run through the holes. Okay. Um, we have an inner hole set and an outer hole set. Personally, I just run the inner one. Okay. You can see here I've gone 100 by 200. And we don't allow for a work loose. The work loose, remember, was the clearance on the, on the, on the bolt. In here, we just tell it I want the bolt diameter. We could also have it slotted and rotate the slots. Okay, all, all pretty straightforward. 
Okay, um, I don't run the outer holes, but they're the same set of settings. Uh, finally, the offsets are the offsets for the holes this time. All right. Uh, connection, we can have it connected with tie bolts, and this is something you can have a play with. All right. Um, we can say, I want it with tie bolts, and that will put a graphic in at this point, but we can do more than this. All right. Uh, I can tell it to use a dowel, and I can tell it to run from a database, okay, if you set it up to, to, to have a specific database. There's a German database as a default, okay. Um, if I don't have a database, that isn't too much of a problem. Um, I'll just have a look at this welding before we go on. Uh, you can opt to uh, have the welds if they're non-specific weld, like um, full strength butt welds and so forth. Okay, so you can nominate that, you know, I want to weld on the uh, flange of the web. Now, it's a little bit hard to see the weld graphic here in this 3D mode. Okay, quite often if I just switch this back to wireframe, you'll probably just, just be able to see that weld. See the little the little red weld there? Okay, just puts a little graphic in. Remember, it's grouped to that column now, and that will put a weld flag on. Okay, it will come out in the 2D detailing. Okay, so if you have a non-standard weld, it will be quite handy for you to tick these switches and so forth. All right, let's get back to transparent modeling. Okay, um, now let's back to these tie bolts. Okay, um, data dowels, dowels in here. Okay, so this is the diameter of the bolt. Let's make this a 20. Okay, and the, and the, the shank as it passes through the hole will be 20. Uh, the overall length, let's make that 150. Um, that is the step down as it goes through the plate there, that second one, we won't worry about that. The key is the, the, the nut that goes on it. Okay, so about 28 I think is an, M, is an M20 bolt, something around that. Let's use that. Okay, that's our end result. Okay, now at the moment, this will come up with just a generic tie bolt name, I think. If we go back to connect, we can actually give it a proper label like, uh, let's call this an M20 uh, chem set, something like that. There you go. So if we have a look at these items now, they should be called, hopefully the um, they'll be called a chem set. There you go, name, M20 chem set. So it'll come out in the material list as an M20 chem set. Cool. Okay, so that's a bit of fun. Have a bit of fun with that one. Um, what are we up to connect? Uh, let's turn that. I, I don't normally put those on. Okay, I would normally put a U-bolt or something on over here. Um, now, it, if we're, um, we can actually assign material grades and so forth to the plate and to the bolt. This is important. If we use a poly plate, use grade 250 if we use a um, uh, uh, use a uh, flat bar it would be 300 plus so you want your material list to come out right so depending if we tick poly plate here just be mindful that I'm using a plate I'll probably need to go and change the assignment here to grade 250 just just to reflect the correct object okay we can do all this stuff later but I mean it's just good practice if you're putting a ton of these things in all right, just to make sure that this information right here is coming out correct. Okay. All right, I'll reset this back to using actual flat bar. So I'm currently using 200 by 20 flat bar, 310 long, grade 300 plus. Okay, I do not add a detail style at this point. Okay, the description by default, it has picked up a description. Um, there are three, as far as descriptions go, there's three main columns here. One, two, and three. Mine is the second one, okay? This is the second one, the second set here is mine. So if we put in a manual connection, the I, I would mimic the description of what I would have done had I put an automatic connection in. If I manually drew a base plate, I'd come into here and I'd call it a base plate. By default, ProStructures will give this thing a, a name all by itself. So um, 
don't worry about it in this instance, but I want to bring it to your attention. If you manually draw something, match the the description name with um, what you would have used had you automatically connected it so that it gets the right rule for detailing and you'll get a far better result. Okay, uh, level configuration value that will be fine and no item number. Punch holes. Punch holes puts a little mark on the plate where the column is located. You can see there's a little there's a little dimple is what it gets put in. And that's so the NC data comes out with a little mark on it where the base plate is to show you where everything is 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 located. Okay. Um, I don't normally do this practice, but it's becoming more and more um, I guess accepted or requested that we do this sort of thing. So just so you know, punch holes puts a little mark where everything goes. So I'll just um, turn that off. Galvanizing holes. It's important that you're aware that this exists, so you muck around with these uh, as far as whatever's called up, how you want to do it. You can put it in the corners of the beam. You can put it on the base plate. Um, you can have a hole in the middle. You can have all sorts of stuff. Okay. Um, um, so just, uh, I'll whack it. here's a center one on the base plate, so, okay, you, you can have all sorts of weird and wacky stuff, all right? Obviously my settings aren't quite right, so, um, with a little bit of, um, fine tuning, you, you'll get all this to come out, so, um, for RHS and stuff like that, your four bolt would obviously be the, you know, one, for, one hole for each corner of the RHS and things like that, all right? Okay, finishing up in the layout tab, um, if you get stuck with something, please come and have a look at the templates, all right? I've given you a base template for, for this connection, okay? Um, it, just if you ever get stuck and, and you really, your connection's out of control, come back and reload the template, all right? It will set you back to zero. Very good. While I'm thinking of it, that rotate uh, flat steel. This is this is really important. Um, if we this this comes into play if I've got say an SHS like a square section um, that's in a wall cavity. So let's um let's let's just draw this up so you know what I'm talking about here. So I've got a square section. Uh, let's make it about 90. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little square section in here. I'm toggling E to toggle my focal point around. Okay, you can see, here's my ECS. See where my blue is, all right? Remember, so I'm just rotating it around here. Okay, there, there's the blue. The blue, remember, points to where the top of the steel would be, okay? In this instance here, though, it also is the length direction of the base plate that gets put on, okay? See, see, the, see, see which direction the length of that base plate just went? So let's just shorten this up so it makes a little bit more sense. But the length, by default, will go along the blue line. All right? Let's say that I've got to run it the other way, though. Okay? I, I have to run the blue out. Okay? For some, for, and there'll be times that you'll have to do this. Um, if you're using uh, like, non, uh, like a rectangular object, you know, it has to run one way. Okay, so I'm just just um, getting some of these settings so it just looks like the right thing. Okay, here we go. So so here's here's our base plate. The length of it runs the direction of the blue of the column, and you can see here's the yellow line here. That that's that's the length. Okay. So if I rotate. If I come to here, and all I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate this column now so the blue points up the page. See, it forces that base plate to spin around. Okay, because what controls that base plate direction is the column. Okay, so what if we want to run it the other way? Okay, we can do that. We're going to come in here, right click, and we're going to change this connection. All right, you can also delete the connection from here. This is the proper way. We don't just delete components of an automatic connection ever, okay? 
you, you delete the connection properly. So you can see this direction here is the length. If I come to layout, rotate it, you watch the ECS. Okay. Bang. Okay. See the ECS of the plate just flicked around? And now what I've got to do is just flip the numbers of the length and width around. Okay. So instead of being 90 by 250, it's 250 by 90. Do the same with the holes. And off we go. Okay. So the blue of the column is running sort of to our, uh, to our right, but the base plate itself is running up and down. Okay. So that is what this switch here does. All right. It allows us to be able to maintain flat bar objects and it is particular for flat bar objects. We don't have this problem with plate. Okay. Um, but there's many places that want to use flat bar. All right. So let's come back to this connection here. Let's say that I want this connection um, on all of our columns. All right. Uh, now, <laughs> you can see here, it always uses the last connection used. Okay, which is our, see, see this guy here? All right. Now, th that this works in our favor sometimes too. All right. Remember, um, I could go to template if I wanted to um, and load our template, or I could come back here, go edit this connection. Oh. I can go edit connection, change the connection. Now, this is the last settings that were used. So I'm just going to tick OK. I'm going to do nothing. But it, that was now technically the last connection that was considered. So now I can put the new connection in there. Clever, hey? All right. Now, one thing we haven't come across here before is this clone button. OK. It allows us to either match individual connections or uh, add extra ones in. So make sure you read the prompt line. And what it's saying is, right, m select the plate to match the properties or reset to use multiple, to add multiple plates. So read the, read the prompt line. I hit reset. I'm holding down control and I'm just going to run around and I'm going to grab, I don't want that slab, I want the column. I'm holding down control and I'm running around grabbing all the columns that meet the criteria that I want to put that base plate on. Bang, they're all in. Okay, just did the whole building. Okay, really nice and simple. So the clone can do two things. I can match one column to another, or I can use it to add multiple connections in. Now, don't forget, if I want to get rid of that base plate, delete connection. Don't just get rid of the base plate. Okay, don't just delete it. You, you, you've got to remove the modification. It is a logical link. So that's it for our base plate session. It's a really great function. It, it's very reliable, works well. Um, go and have a bit of an experiment with that. The standard one um, gives you stiffness and all sorts of stuff. If you wanted to use stiffness, I showed you the German one today, which I, I like it. It's nice and simple. Quite often, you know, a lot of my base plates that are required are nice and simple. So I just use that one. Um, the one with stiffness will do a similar job, but add a lot more functionality too. So they both work uh, very similar to each other. So have a bit of fun with that and see how you go. See you in the next session.